Nori's a fucking Yeah, Nori's great, crazy. man. Great energy. Uh, obviously, he's kind of, like, revolutionized, like, uh, him and Joe Budden, um, what it means to, like, have a second career in hip-hop, you know? Because yeah. I think... Um, it's beautiful, man. Yeah, I think it, it's corny that, like, people, like, I, I didn't like Drake's response to Joe because I thought Joe just gave a fair criticism about his album. And it felt like it came from a fan perspective. A hundred percent. And I was no. like, yo, nothing Joe Budden said was some hater shit. Dude. It was just like, I like, it sucks. They just have a history. Yes, it. they do have a history, but I just feel like it sucks that you can't even like give a real critique of music without people being like, fuck you. And that's just life. When a woman is involved, it, it always makes it amplified. Which is fair, Tahiri, which is probably what Tahiri is involved. Shout out, man, I forgot about Tahiri. Yeah. Well, Tahiri is one of the OG spank yeah. banks, man. That's yeah. That's yeah. actually true. The original fatties. But I think two things that really got to him. One was the fact that he mentioned 25-year-old girls. And two, Maybe. You're right about that, I'm sure. And that, I think that really bothered him because, you know, it, who wouldn't that bother? But two, it was a really early, fast take. It was fast. So Drake's like, God damn. Man, like, like, bro, man, give, like, like give, give it a week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Come yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, I, I still, like. But he's a big time Yeah, and uh, like I, I can criticize. Listen, when you first hear the album, I get it, like. That is my main critique with Drake. His entire career is like, I just want to know how he feels about like shit like that isn't bitches. Yeah. <laughs> like, does he have an opinion about like, I don't know anything. Israel and Hamas. Like, it's just like, uh, obviously yeah. that's something that's happening right now. Yeah. But even like just anything, like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how he feels about anything. Like, do we really know how Drake feels? Like his opinion on much? Yeah. Like, no, we have no idea. Remember Michael, I feel like he's kind of just going the Michael Jordan route because Michael Jordan was very A, like he was in the middle because yeah, he always yeah, said yeah, yeah. Republicans buy sneakers too, which is fine. <laughs> but like, tell us how you feel like about <laughs> something, you know? And, and to me, like, that is one thing that like his counterparts that he's always compared to, J. Cole and Kendrick, is that they're very good of like diving into parts of human emotion that are extremely relatable outside of bitches. And relationship shit. And like, whether it's, you know, J. Cole dropping a whole album revolving addiction, like, uh, which was crazy to me, you know? Like he, uh, like, he had a whole entire album, and the entire album really was like... Was it a King's Disease, was it? No, that's... Uh, that's no, it's not. Uh, what was it? K.O.D.? K.O.D.? Yeah, yeah, yeah. K well, King of Dreams? Was it? King of Dreams. Huh? Kids on... Uh, that was no, the one with the, with, with the colorful like painting on the. On the I don't under. think it's kids. Yeah, but the whole, the whole, the whole entire that. album was the whole theme was just kind of what's going on in the world right now with like people being addicted to drugs. And he talks about like how when he was growing up, you know, his, his mom was an alcoholic and like what he had to deal with, like that shit. That like, you know what I'm saying? Like, damn, people can relate to that on a different level. Now Drake is really good at making hit records and like quotable bars for like Instagram captions and he could rap his fucking ass off. He could write his ass off. He's makes catchy music, but like sometimes we want more from our ghosts. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. He definitely killed him with that caption though. It was, it was, it was brutal. You know what I mean? It, it was brutal, but go ahead. the reason why I related to Joe and what he said and why I felt him is because we want what he was referring to, I believe was the Drake that raps on Tuscan leather with Jay Z, the Drake that raps with Rick Ross. Anytime they lick up, he's yeah. saying like, like, don't just talk about the young nigga shit, the, the young guy shit. But Drake's also smart. He's got a, a crazy team behind him. Just tell him by the features, you can kind of tell what demographic and what age group Yeet is going for. Yeet is on his album. Okay, yeah. Yeet, Sexy Red, Bad Bunny. I love the Sexy Red song. Um, that shit's fire. Really? I love that. It hasn't girl won me over yet. Hey, that yeah. shit's a smash, bro. Yeah. <laughs> that shit's a fucking Shazai. smash. That shit's a smash. But this is the thing is like, I'm not even mad at him because Drake's always done a good job of like embracing like whoever's on the come up, you know? I just like, you know, for once, like, just I want to just know how you feel about just like anything, you know, like, uh, you know, like, fuck, man. Like, you're like, make a song about how your dad was like, you know, you, you kind of grew up in like a split home situation like you grew up with your mom and your dad was kind of like something a player deep, man. just something, something make a joe yeah. budden song yeah, a little mood music <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. a little mood music would go a long way for drake <laughs> yeah. you know what's wild is for me personally i was looking for classic drake and when i said it this is what i meant right like i want to take care type drake and i feel like this album kind of has more of that vibe for me so i actually enjoyed the album a lot. right i like the album yeah. and and i actually thought uh her loss was probably my favorite Drake album 
in a long yeah, probably her since loss was pretty fire. Probably her since loss. uh if you're reading this it's too late. Um but I loved her loss and I don't mind the new album. I do I do like the fact he did that EDM album, even though a lot of people didn't like it. I yeah. I respected the fact he tried to do something different. Cause I feel like sometimes Drake just be mailing it in. And I was like, oh, this fool dropped a, a fucking house album, low key. Like right. at That's least he awesome. was like, fuck it. I'm gonna do something for me. Whether y'all like it or not. And that to me I respect. And I and you know, I, listen, I, I I have my critiques with Drake, in which I've shared with him to his face. Okay, for the record. <laughs> for the record. Um, I, I think also in Drake's defense, for, for Joe to say we want grown-up Drake, he gives you these somewhat themed albums. Right. So who's to say that the next one isn't going to be Yeah, like and it, like, yeah, I know? mean, the name of the album kind of tells you, like, what we're, what we're going to get. Well, I think this was what people were expecting to get out of Certified Lover Boy based off the name of that album. That's fair. Okay, so people are thinking, we, I want this Playboy shit, young. And young that album grew on me a lot. Like, yeah, Certified too. Lover Boy really grew on me. And, um, you know, I'll say this, man. I saw Drake live uh, probably, I don't know, <laughs> nine or ten times in my life. And the last time I saw him, I'm, I think I've been to almost all his tours for somebody who's pretty critical of Drake. Um <laughs> But I'm a fan you of Drake. Gotta, like, like, let's be clear. I'm a fan. Word. <laughs> like, Drake should, like, people, sh- it, like, he's at this point in his career where there shouldn't be an argument that he's the GOAT. But there is an argument. And and that's that frustrates me as a fan of Drake. Because I'm like, right. bro, the fact you're as big as you are and as successful you as you are and you're as, as talented as you are and you're an alien level MC. But the fact that there's still there's an argument against you being the greatest of all time. It's just frustrating. It is. Yeah. Because to me, the one rapper that if you say their name, you can't argue is Jay. Now, I'm, I, you know, whether or not you think Jay's your goat or not, like if someone told you Jay's the goat, you'd be like, yeah. I mean, it'd be almost be like, it's like, it's like almost like the basketball thing. Like to me, if I ask you who's the greatest of all time and you say anybody but Jordan or LeBron, then I'm like, you know, then... You're wrong. Like, Wilt was great. Bill Russell had rings. Like, you know, Kareem's amazing. But, like, it's Jordan or LeBron, and there's really no argument against either of them. Now, you could prefer one or the other, but to me, it's Jay-Z or Jay-Z. And then there's, like, five or six other dudes. But Drake should be, like, it's Jay-Z or Drake. Yeah, for sure. You know? Because he is the the Because Jay-Z has songs like Meet the Parents, which are, like, one of the the greatest songs you know, storytelling records ever that doesn't get enough love. Like, what's the sto- What's the crazy concept storytelling Drake song? Can you name one? Yeah, there isn't. It, it, just a concept record. How yeah. about that? Like, a crazy concept. Think about Rewind, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think about, like, like that. just shit like that. And like, Soon You'll Understand by Jay-Z is, like, a such a crazy song that's, like, so emotionally... I'm definitely diving into Jay-Z music right after this because he just do some records out there that's just... What's annoying about that whole thing too is that we know he can do it. Yes, because so he's like, come on. Well, listen, and this is crazy because like I was, I saw him live, and uh, you know, last time I saw him was the Scorpion tour, which was dope, and I was just like, damn, like, I be hating on Drake. I'm not even call it hate. I give him fair criticism because I, I, it's not hate because I'm a fan of Drake. I really enjoy Drake. I'm like, dog, this motherfucker might be the greatest of all time. The problem is, is I'm saying he might be. Yeah, like. <laughs> This motherfucker well, just hey. did two hours straight of, of hit records and then stopped in the middle of his set and, and let his DJ play weird versions of his others. Like, yeah. bro, did you guys see the Drake show? Did you guys go to this Drake? last tour? No. Nah. Okay, so the last tour, there's like a midway through the tour or through Drake's set, um, he goes and stands in the DJ booth. Okay. And he just vibes with the crowd. Dope. And like... The DJ's like playing MCs. like one like one dance is Drake's second biggest record ever, and he doesn't actually perform it on tour. His DJ plays some weird remix of it, and he's just yeah, he's vi- vibing to it. But he but like that part of the set is like ten songs, and they're all like number one records, and they're just like throwaways for his live show. <laughs> like yeah. nobody has had this level of success, and it's like literally not close. And watching him live, you're like, Jesus, this dude just he didn't perform like thirty songs, mm-hmm. like. He could do a whole a whole fucking feature. Like, yeah. they could do a tour with just his features. One he of, really could. One of the things that really, because this is the thing too. Like early, it wasn't cool to say you you fuck with Drake. It wasn't. See, cool I to fuck say. with Drake early. Like yeah. I was a big blog era dude. So like, you know, Same. I'm I, still fly. 
Awesome. I really loved the fact that Drake was like a normal. And it's the same thing I loved about Kanye is that he, he he just gave me like he wasn't trying to be somebody he wasn't yeah. early on. You were like, oh, he's just like a nice kid who can sing and rap and he's putting out dope records like this yeah. is this is refreshing, you know. And so, you know, I just think that. Yeah, I just want more from him. And, and maybe I'm like, you know, maybe I'm tripping. Nah, yeah. I think I think every Drake fan feels that way, too, because like, I think if you if you want to be the greatest of all time, like you got to You got to. Um, you got to pull emotion out of people somehow. Absolutely. Like, I want to see somebody cry to a Drake song while he's performing it because it it does something to them and they and it takes them to a personal place in their yeah, life. That, that, that Conway the Machine cow record. The cow record. You know you know the mean? cow. Yeah. Or I just, you know, I have a homie named Jelly Roll um, who uh, Jelly Roll. has been an underground rapper forever and is now, like, the biggest country artist in the world. It's fucking crazy. Huge. It's insane. I think I know that guy. I DJed for him at, in St. Pete in 2013, and there was like 30 kids there. Like, mm. crazy. Um, <laughs> Not anymore. So I went to like three of his shows last month because he was in Cali, and he's like a, one of my best friends in music. And uh, he has a song called Save Me, and he performs this song. Crazy. When I tell I you. I got goosebumps. You talking about it. When I tell you, like, you look in the crowd, and I'm standing, like, on the side of the stage, just people watching. One in four people are bawling their fucking eyes out. It's that good. Like, it's insane. Like, that is like, because it's a song about, like, struggling with addiction. And, like, it's it's just such a beautiful record that, like, pierces people in a way that, like, you know, he he has, like, people holding up signs, like, I'm here to represent uh, my 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 uh, my son who overdosed this. You know what I mean? Like, shit like that. And it's like, you know if you can pull that emotion out of people the way DMX did, mm-hmm. think about DMX. Like DMX made motherfuckers cry, Word. bro. Grown but men. You know what though? Drake does that. And then he goes away from it. He shies away from it. I don't think he makes he'll, people he'll, cry. No, but he'll do, he'll say some deep emotional shit. Back when yeah. I was fucking with, uh, it was 2030 or whatever the fuck it was. No, he's reminiscing on fucking with a woman. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, the, yeah, but it's yeah. always, it's always reminiscing about a bitch he fucked who worked at Hooters. <laughs> 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 but he never stays there. He, he goes and then he goes back on. No, but but see the thing the is, is we we get it, we get it. Like you've you've fucked a lot of women and and things didn't work out all the time. So like, what else is going on, Drake? Like, it's true too. Like like what was going on? Like I don't know. Like just anything else. I mean, you know, listen. And and there's also something to be said that Drake probably lived like a really good life. Yeah, you know, he grew up in it. I'm yeah, sure yeah, for sure. And he, like, was a child actor, right? So, like, Drake probably didn't have to deal with, like, a lot of, like... Hardship. <laughs> but everyone has something. Like, there's... Like, yeah, we need to hear the Hannah Montana story. I think it's obvious, too, that he really gives a fuck about what everybody thinks. Yep. Which, which is a sign of, like, a little, little insecurity for whatever reason. Like, like, this is what I said. My criticism of how he handled the Joe Budden situation is, I think, Joe Budden very much highlighted an insecurity because he him responding isn't normal because he's Joe Joe Bunnins made mm. three disc records on him. He ain't he he didn't say much but like pushing buttons. Right. You know what I mean? That's it. And then I thought record. I thought they got past it too, which is crazy. Like I don't know. Yeah, nah, yeah. Joe Joe is frust- uh, frustrated. So I'm a huge Joe Bunnins fan. Me too. I grew up a huge Joe Bunnins fan. Listen. I was actually expecting ten minutes. <laughs> crazy. I gave you my all <laughs> But it seems like that's nah, not. He had a song enough. on his first album called Ten Minutes that like yeah. just pulled me in. It was like ten minutes of him smoking just a cigarette. Smoking a cigarette. Yep. And then mood music. Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Just so great. But that's see, to me, there was like for Joe being as underground as he was, uh what made his fans so rabid was the the emotional relatability. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so like you could say whatever you want about Joe Budden, but like he related to people, however big or small, in a way that Drake has never related to a single one of his fans. Absolutely. And that is not to say that Drake isn't incredible, but like to me, that's what's missing. And he definitely doesn't have a failed music career. Oh my God. Even if you listen to his music, he always You're talking about said, Joe? Yeah. No, Joe's what are we talking about? Yeah. Like Joe's yeah. got fucking plaques. And he turned a music career into being one of the most successful media personalities in the fucking world. So like to me, it's like, nah, he, he kind of figured this shit out. Yeah. And um, if he's a failed rapper, then um, I'm, I can think of real failed rappers that would give up their left arm for Joe Budden's failed Drake, rap career. Absolutely. And I think what, what Drake, so something I felt 
where what Drake was saying that I felt was accurate and especially in his sense, right? Like his idea of what it is to be a successful artist is is the hits. So for him, when he's talking about it, he's saying like, do you see what I'm doing? I'm the Michael Jackson of this shit. Like, I appreciate your input, but I'm the Michael Jackson of this shit. I'm the, I'm the hit maker. You Which is I mean? fine, but this is also hip hop. Yeah, so like, exactly. So exactly. like, so the problem that's is that's why I said his idea. But that's that's the thing, and I get that. And 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 when I spoke, so like him and I had a pretty cool convo. Uh, the only time I ever met, well, I, I met Drake twice. But the time I actually hung out with him and like talked to him, I was with Freddie Gibbs, and we we're at this place. And I've told the story before, um, but we had like a real conversation, and I was there with my boy Eric LaRock, with, who's my podcast producer, and I was there with Fred, and they both kind of know that like. Like, Drake knew exactly who I was. And yeah. at the time, Freddie was working on his album. And I was trying to get fucking... I, I saw Drake at the bar, and I was like, yo, Fred, we should go over there and talk to Drake. Like, this fool, this fool just cut two records for Benny. Like, he's he's trying to do some rap shit right now. And... Um, Shout out to Freddie Gibbs, by the way. I know he loves Buffalo. Um, that's one of my best <laughs> friends, man. <laughs> that, that whole situation, I, I don't really want to get into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just a Buffalo <laughs> dude, so you know. No, I get it, I get it, I get it. You know, Conway still loves Fred, you yeah. know. Uh, <laughs> with that being said, um, you know, I, I, I had to kind of tell him, because I, I say this a lot, because I, I introduced myself, and, I was like, he said, and he said, I know exactly who you are. But he said it in a way like, I know who you are, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I was like, hey, yeah, man, like, uh, y- you know, I gotta say it to your face, like I always get shit because I always say you don't have a classic album. <laughs> <laughs> so then he started to kind of explain to me, like, well, a guy like you would never think it, like I would have a classic album. And I was like, no, I, because I have this this like bar of what a classic is. I have albums that are personal classics to me, and then I have like the pantheon of classics, what I call like consensus hip hop classics, and that's like. The Good Kid, Mad Cities, the Get Rich or Die Tryins, the Snoop Dogg, Doggy Styles, the Chronic. It's undeniable. These undeniable classics that nobody can say shit about, right. right? And to me, Drake has two classics. To me. And that's Take Care, and that's Nothing Was the Same. Nothing Was the Same to me is his best album. Now, Fire. the problem is, is he don't have a Good Kid, Mad City. He don't have a Get Rich or Die Trying, where if you say the name, and the closest thing he does have is Take Care, to be fair to him. It is probably Take Care if there was one. Yeah. But I told him that. I was like, I just don't think you got, like, the undeniable. And he started to, like, you could tell he gave a fuck. Yeah. Mm. He's thought about And it. he gave me, like, a 10-minute explanation about, like, where he's from and, like, how, like, the music is different. And, like, mm. it was it was crazy. I, just, yeah. I think a lot of people forget that part. Exactly. And it made sense to me, you uh. know, because at the end of the day, he's from Canada. And, like, the vibes that he's into are, like, worldly in a way that, like, you know, maybe we, maybe we do look at Drake through a, uh, a lens that he doesn't want to be looked at through. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, again... Like, he's more bad bunny than Jay-Z. But the problem is, is, like, <laughs> he is an elite all-time rapper. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, Drake can rap his ass off. Yeah, somebody, somebody kind of warped my brain, and it's been messing with me ever since. They were talking about Drake, and he said, uh, feature Drake is better than regular Drake. I mean... And I think that's true. With his competitive nature, it makes sense. That makes sense. Not to say standalone Drake isn't fire too, but I like when Drake does these like timestamp songs. It's like six a.m. Yeah, yeah, me too. I love him. Yeah, shit, bro, he's fucking. It's a I fire just, theme. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I mean, dude, I, I think, um, you know, like I said, I think Drake has two classics. I think that, but I just don't think he's got the consensus, like undeniable one that everyone thinks, mm-hmm. you know. And I want him to make that album. I think one day he will. But also, I, who knows? You know, I'll tell you a real like situation that. Made